T. Wade. Spins away from Overton. Lobs it low to Harms, who hammers it home. So the dunk for Matt Harms, his first two points as a Cougar, come on a slam. Wade, shot clock's at 10. Here's Harms. Boy, oh, he did really well reading the defense that time. Just this classic pick and roll. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Well, in the days and weeks following the cancellation of the NCAA tournament back in the spring, one of the few bright spots for BYU basketball came in the form of a phone call to Coach Pope from our special guest tonight. He is Matt Harms, joining us here at the Mohegan Sun Resort in Connecticut. Matt, good to have you on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start with that. Can you tell us about that phone call back in the spring? No, that was that was a really fun phone call to make. Uh, I remember it was it was my birthday that day, and that morning I had received an awesome video from all the coaches uh, saying happy birthday to me. They had a cake there. Uh, they all you know enjoyed the cake. I obviously was looking on as they were enjoying it, saying uh, saying happy birthday. Uh, and I kind of decided when I woke up, you know, I kind of knew I was wanting to go to BYU. I kind of known for the past few days, but I wanted to be 100% sure. So in the afternoon, I um, Coach Pope called me. He actually called me first, uh, and we just kind of talked for a little bit. And I wanted to be like, oh, I, I wasn't 100% sure. I was only like 99.9% sure. So I didn't want to <laughs> say it then. But he hung up the phone, and then like 30 minutes later, I was like, you know what? I actually, I just got to do this right now. So I, I called him. Uh, and I told him right there, and he was, I remember he was with two of his daughters, he was in the car, uh, and he just went crazy, and they all went crazy, and it was such an awesome, awesome moment. I'll definitely cherish that. It's a question you obviously had to answer for yourself first, but uh, if you could answer it for our viewers now, the question is simply, why BYU for you? Man, it was, it's hard to explain. I, I've, I've been trying to explain this for, for so long, but it's, it's so tough because it was just felt right. You know, it, it, I... Every time I explain the way I conducted my process, it's so analytical and it was sitting there with the notebook and writing out pros and cons and making an Excel spreadsheet with everything, every factor that could be, you know, construed. But then in the end, it was, it was the Monday before I committed and I was like, I just really want to go to BYU. And all the spreadsheets, I threw that all out. I was like, I'll delete this spreadsheet stuff. I throw the notebook out the window. I just want to go play for Mark Pope at BYU. And it was that easy in the end. And when I woke up on Wednesday, that was my birthday, I was like, this is what I want to do, and this is what I've been wanting to do for the past three days, so I'm just going to go and do it. So if you were uh, breaking down Coach Pope's attributes in the spreadsheet or the notebook, what's that going to look like? Man, it's just energy at all times, high energy, you know, just that relentless effort that we always preach here, that's part of our culture. Uh, that was really it, you know, just making sure that if I had any question, it would be answered. If there was anything I needed to know, I would know the, that day, I would know. Uh, all my questions were just always answered. There was just so much to learn. It was probably the school in my recruiting process that I learned the most from. And I was like, that's so important for me because I felt I was in a spot where I didn't just need you know, an, an opportunity. I need to actually get better. I need someone that I could really get better every single day. And that was it. You know, I, I felt that if I'm being recruited, I'm already learning this much. I'm learning this much about advanced stats. I'm learning about how they've done with the guys that, you know, they had on the team last year. If I'm already learning so much now, imagine how much I'm going to learn once I'm actually on the team and in, in the gym. Coach Pope, back in the day, in his NBA days, played with a guy nicknamed the, the, the Dunking Dutchman. That's Rick Smiths. Uh, what does is, what is the Rick Smiths name mean to people in the Netherlands, or where you're from, and and does the Harms family and the Smiths family have any kind of connection? Uh, it means a lot. You know that name means a lot back home. You know he's probably the greatest Dutch basketball player of all time. Not even probably, definitely. Uh, so it's I I do personally know him. You know he's been in touch over the years uh, as I've gone through my journey here in the states, and it's been really awesome. I actually got to meet him uh, last year when we played when Purdue played Butler uh, somewhere in December. We played him for the Crossroads Classic. Uh, and I actually got to meet him since his son Derek played for Butler at the time. Uh, so that was a really awesome experience being able to meet him. You know, he's been really kind to me. He's always reached out. You know, he reached out when I committed to BYU to congratulate, con congratulate me. So it's been, it's been really fun being able to know him and, you know, special as well because when you start basketball in the Netherlands, that's the guy you hear about. You know, he's the guy that's right. been most successful in the NBA out of any Dutch player. 
All right, let's flash forward. Uh, the BYU season was just about to begin, and you're and you're 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 playing really well in practice. Things are going well, and then, like a week before the season starts, a week and a half, you find yourself, uh, let's say, hobbled. Um, tell us about what happened that day and how concerned you were about not being able to start your season on time. Man, it was it was terrifying for a little bit. You know, I it was at the end of a practice. I, I remember, you know, it was. Um, it's like 4 p.m. We're doing going into our, our last drill. It's Coach Popa said last segment. The past four segments, he's been like last segment. Uh, so you know, I'm uh, that that last play. I'm just coming down on someone's foot, and uh, I just sprained my ankle for the first time. Uh, I'd never sprained my ankle before that, which is crazy. You know, playing basketball, never spraining your ankle. Um, but it happened there. It hurt a lot. <laughs> so I was a little scared. You know, I'd never felt that before. Uh, and it was definitely scary as well to have to know that, um, you know, I was maybe not going to be able to play the first game, which I really never knew in a position. I had a concussion last year, which caused me to miss some games at Purdue, but I'd never really had an injury that caused me to miss games. So it was, it was a little scary, but we have a great training staff, so they helped me out every step of the way. You missed the first two games, but you did get on the floor for the third game on the weekend, and, and they probably played you maybe maybe two and a half minutes longer than they thought they might. How did it feel to finally get back out on the floor and prove to yourself that uh, you could give it a full go and, and come out of it okay? Oh, it was awesome. You know, I was a little worried, of course, going into it. You know, I'd, um, it was really my first time going, like, full action, like, 100% again. You know, um, I'd really worked out and I'd practiced and that kind of stuff, but it just going into a game is always a little different. So I was a little worried, of course, but you know, going into it, it felt so good. You know, I felt really loose. Uh, and then going into halftime, I got a little worried again. I was like, what if it, you know, seizes up on me? What if it slows down? Uh, but it really didn't. You know, I just kept feeling good all the way through. And I was honestly, I was upset when I went out, uh, walked off the court, and uh, our trainer was like, yo, you're done. Your restriction is up. But then, you know, Coach Poe saved me, and he gave me two more minutes, two more minutes and 15 seconds. And I was just having the time of my life out there. You know, so good to be back out there. You know, even though only missing two games, uh, it was really tough to miss those games. Okay, uh, life in Bubbleville so far for you and the guys. How's it going? Uh, Bubbleville has been really fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's been really cool to see how, uh, how they're really keeping us safe. You know, there's a lot of teams here. There's traces of teams everywhere. There's little, little signs like, oh, Virginia Tech. And there's like all these other schools. And... Um, and you're like, well, where are they? You know, you don't see any of them. It's very interesting. So it's, you know, it's, it's definitely doing a great job to keep us all safe. You know, the protocols are in place. We're testing, every, like we're testing all the time uh, just to make sure we can play these games. I really appreciate that, you know, because I think these tournaments are always such a crucial part of the season where you can really establish yourself, play some very quality games, uh, which, we're, you know, we're going to do these next two days. Uh, we're going to play some awesome games, and it's all possible because of these great protocols. All right, finally, fun fact. Matt is short for nothing. You are just Matt. You're not Matthew. You're Matt Harms. That is all. That is it. You know, um, my uh, my credentials here actually say Matthew, uh, which everything has always said. <laughs> which Matthew. is wrong. I always have to be. It's wrong. Yeah, it is wrong. And I always have to say, you know, hey, it's just Matt. Uh, I don't, still don't know why my parents did that. Uh, there must be some good reason behind it. But it's just Matt. It's no middle name either. It's just Matt Harms. That's it. Very short. Very easy to remember. Matt, always good to be with you. Uh, good luck this week, and we'll see you on the floor tomorrow. Thank you. I'm excited to play.